So now when we think about stuff like VOD reviews of actually truly being aware of what needs to be identified, not just excuse making. Once we identify what it is that we're actually aiming at, we're picking our spots to practice. What are we not practicing anymore? Just like with every decision that we make, we're also not making a lot of other decisions. So are those things that we're giving up time to practice, things worth giving up, constantly evaluating, what are we practicing? Why are we practicing it? Is that something that I have a natural advantage in? Is that something that I can afford to let it get a little weaker? And how much time am I working with? All of that stuff needs to be regimented to practice properly. And having that in mind is the essence of how you practice how you play. Does your practice resemble what it actually looks like? What are you even fucking actually practicing? You know what you should be practicing. You know what you want to practice. You know why you're practicing. Now, is your practice doing all of that stuff justice? Are you practicing with intensity, game speed intensity? Or is the only time you see game speed in game because it's going to go too fast for you? Straight up. You don't practice game speed. You're not going to be prepared once you experience it. Is that not obvious? I think it is. I don't know that really. <laughs> I think Allen Iverson is coming out of the woodworks to talk about practice, but I think if you had to ask him now, he would probably say, or if I guess you reframe the question for him would be a better way to put it. He would probably say, yeah, I mean, I've been practicing my entire life and practice is extremely important. But it's, you know, when you are at that level and you have done what the things that he's done, <laughs> That's not something that I can, I can't speak on his opinion on practice, but I would like to think that his mindset on the concept has changed over time since he spoke on it the way that he did originally and what I'm alluding to. If you don't know what I'm alluding to and you're like 13, just look up Allen Iverson practice. And then right after that, go look up Allen Iverson mixtape and you kind of find it hard to believe that he never that he never practiced and that he didn't find practice important i think <laughs> i'm sure he spoke to it later on in his career and was willing to admit that practice is probably pretty important but also when you live game speed like he does you know there are certain levels to it where you get to say what you want to say and people think about it differently believe it or not they're a little more considerate of your perspective when you have accomplished certain things but game speed is not there's no substitute for it but you can get damn close but also and it's something that I've actually thought about a lot game speed and going overboard with it there's also a way that that is detrimental in itself where you you almost don't you kind of lose the the natural timing of what you find yourself in which is what game speed really affords you is the proper timing not too slow but also not too fast because that is just as important as not going too slow and that is going to be its own video timing and all that's gonna that's gonna be a lot of its own videos so you know like and subscribe or press whatever fucking button you want
the timing of it all and the importance of it like that is that is the essence of what you are practicing when you're doing anything it is how you feel and the way that the timing works with the way that you feel how you get in rhythm how you get in the zone you know flow state what whatever you have heard other people call it they're talking about the same thing is just the exact timing of knowing that it's coming right when it's coming and it doesn't stop and it keeps going and you just keep feeling it and 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 not going too slowly and not getting out of time and not being all out of whack and you're trying to find your way in and it becomes choppy and it just falls flat and you're making the wrong noise. You want the clean contact. You want the consistency. You want to feel this feeling of the rhythm when you practice. You don't go up and take a thousand rapid fire shots and then in game you stand there for 10 seconds and you're You didn't get there like you didn't stand there for 10 seconds in practice or did you? Are you doing that on purpose? Do you want to be standing there for 10 seconds? So now when you get into the game, I want to be there for seven and a half seconds. Seven, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. Like on time gets you on target. You're not always going to be on target, but you can get pretty damn close to being always on time. That is part of what you control is your rhythm and your feeling within the environment. That is a part of you is you identifying the pattern of the rhythm, identifying the beat and staying in time and working within the rhythm. Not fucking flailing all over the place and double guessing yourself and you step with the same foot twice and you don't know which way you should be facing because as soon as you get into practice, fucking square up on it and you, mm, and you set it up as fast as you can and you, mm, and you set it up as fast as you can and you, mm, and you set it up as fast. It doesn't happen like that in the game. You're not fucking, they are not giving you your rhythm that you want. You have to work into the rhythm of the game, and they're going to try to throw you off of your rhythm if it's a competitive environment, obviously. You're, I hope you're not sitting there becoming the best knitter in the world and someone is hand-checking you the entire time. <laughs> I don't know. That could probably make you a better knitter if someone's playing some fucking defense. You're probably going to figure out a different way to knit. I'm just saying. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> There might be something there. And that's a part of it. I'm actually going to start to get to that. I'm going to write down full contact knitting real fast so that I make sure I circle back around to it. But when you are in the rhythm, contact knitting. We'll circle back around to that because that does actually work into something else that I'm not ready to get into yet. I'm gonna put this in between other stuff. There it is. That's where it goes. My contact knitting. And then so, so you're working within the rhythm. Other people are going to try to get you out of the rhythm. That's part of the game. They don't want you in your rhythm, just like you don't want them in their rhythm. Because you know what that gets, so you get a shooter hot. Oh, uh, fuck. We got to do something about that. That's the first thing you go, oh, crap. Well, that's... Like, you just hit four shots in a row, and three of them were threes. Oh, fuck. That is a pattern to identify. That is an outlier in the statistic then we do not want to develop into a consistent rhythm for them so we got to do something about it that's what they're saying about you too getting that rhythm that flow state 
get it going. Practice that feeling of getting into that feeling. That's what all the top athletes are practicing is how they lock in, how they get fucking dialed, how they take all of the distraction and all of the noise and they laser focus or how they allow their peripheral to affect their focus and keep it all within their frame of focus. That's what it really comes down to for me is not only do you get to this point and you become in flow, but how do you get to that point and then widen that? How do you continue to grow how much you can be aware of while within the flow state? How do you keep growing your awareness once you are mentally locked in? Then how do you keep growing? That is what you need to be looking for in really good quality practice. Did you feel like you were in absolute control while you were doing it? If not, keep on digging because there's more there. There is more there. Are you in a flow state while you're doing it? It's an important question because other people are and they are fucking. It's clicking. It is clicking. You have to be able to access that part of it as well. And that is not something that a ton of people are looking to practice. That's a huge, huge advantage. If your quality of practice is that high, that you are getting to a state where you are actually entering flow state on purpose, and then you are doing this stuff, that's another level. That's a whole nother plane of understanding how this stuff goes down. Is you have to get to a mindset, a state of paying attention to things so succinctly that you feel it within you. It's not just a, oh, wait a minute. I know what pitch they're about to throw next. You feel that pitch coming. And it is slow motion coming at you. That bad boy, you can see the seams turning. And it is winding up exactly where you think it's going to go. And the contact is effortless. You know it's going to be there. And the timing is right now. It's just now. That's what it feels like. Now. It's not... Uh... It's not a winding up. It's not a, uh, it's not a fucking, uh, it's not this extra. It's not this, all of the, and it's not this extra grip. It's not this grit. It's not this, uh, it's not this pressure. It's just now you're already there. You are already exactly where you need to be. You're in the right spot. You know where you're standing. You can feel all of it. You are there. You are there you understand where you are it's right there and you see it coming and it's now that's what it feels like there's no mistaking this feeling of it just being automatic and it just being something that you don't just know you feel it you can hold it, you can grab it, you can do things with it. It's something that you wield. It's not just a way to, you know, have fun. It is a part of you that you access to make sure that you are doing something so important to you that it has to be done well. That's what it is. There's no mistaking these feelings of, well, I was having a whole lot of fun and, you know, and then I just was hitting the ball real well. When people know, they know. It's different. Different, different. When you are in that zone, it's 
Whoa. It is. Look the fuck out. It is. Get out of my way. It is. Mm -mm. This one's mine. This is my shot. I'm taking this shot now. And when other people recognize that you got it going on. Here's the ball. Go get him, Tiger. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Hell yeah, it's your shot. Go fucking take that shit and go make it. Go. Do. Go for it. That's what it's all about. Feeling it. It's a different feeling. When you can't understand why people do what they do, it's because they feel differently. That wasn't obvious. It's a different feeling for them. And until you put yourself in a position to genuinely feel what they're feeling, you're not going to understand it, and it's not going to make sense to you. It doesn't need to. That's fine. It really doesn't matter that much, but detracting from what other people are doing and like just being disrespectful about why people are doing what they do it makes me feel like you really have never felt anything that real and you don't fucking understand why anyone would do anything at that point and that is something to practice in my mind to get to that point and to just keep going back to that. Just go back to that feeling as often as you can. That feeling of mastery and confidence and can do. Just the raw, I can do this. Understanding that, that you can get better at something. That's real confidence. And real confidence is the backbone of the mindset of doing more and always being able to compete no matter who you're up against. 